for us to be able to portray these people to try to live in those experiences um i think gives us a lot of perspective of how far we've come and and how much work we need to do as well and and just being open and accepting everybody from any type of uh background good or bad i know you hear this all the time but thank you for your service uh well i don't i don't hear that all the time but i was proud to serve my country I don't want to be a member of just any club. I want to play here. I got to consider our other members, and they are just not used to seeing a Mexican on the golf course. You boys built all this. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. Sorry, boys. When we spoke on the phone, I assumed you were American. Well, you assume right. Well, congratulations on the movie. Um, I loved it. The underdog story, the classic story, right? Yeah. Now, it, it's a feel-good movie, but also kind of, it reminds us of the ugly past and still current a little bit. Like seeing the sign, no Mexicans on the, on the door to a restaurant. It's just like, it's heartbreaking, right? I mean, yeah. you guys are young, but when you see that and you have to play those characters in the 50s, how did that make you feel? Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's sad, it's sad, but I, I think that having the awareness us as, like you said, we're, we're younger, uh, maybe sometimes we haven't seen things as explicit, but I think awareness is incredibly important. And, um, for our, for us to be able to portray these people, to try to live in those experiences, um, I think gives us a lot of perspective of how far we've come and, and how much work we need to do as well. And, and just being open and accepting everybody from any type of uh, background, good or bad. It's funny that you pointed out, you know, seeing that sign of no Mexicans allowed, uh, reading through the script, originally uh, it was it was written as if it had said no brown people alive. And I remember me making a note of that and like asking Julio, the director, like, hey, uh, you know, during this time, in order, like, cause I, if, I, if I'm supposed to feel what, what it was to be Mexican during that time, you know, I wanted it as real as possible. So, you know, I remember mentioning to him, like, there were actual signs, like, aside because brown people was kind of just a broad statement. There was actual signs that said no Mexican people allowed. And, and, um, and, and to me, that, that makes that much difference to actually feel what, you know, those people went through during that time. To see an actual sign that says your own culture, your own people is not allowed in this specific set of area. Uh, it just helped me as an actor to really go back in that time and, and hone in what it felt like to be, you know, in, in that time period. You definitely get angry watching the film and, and seeing the loads of disrespect that um, they had to deal with. And and it kind of just like really opens your eyes. And, and, and yeah, we've come a very, very long way, but you know, we're still, still struggling with that. And so um, this is why we need more films like this to tell our stories so that people know our stories. There's so many of our stories out there that we don't know. This mm -hmm. is a story that I didn't even know. And I'm from Texas. And oh. so it's, it's it, yeah it, it's it's so it, it's an, it's really interesting so how much research did you do um on this movie because they're real life people there's the book but did you take it on upon yourself to kind of do your own little research especially because it's texas 1950s so it's it's all foreign territory for you guys right yeah it definitely is i, I think the the book played a massive role in um jumping into those characters we had the fortune of of kind of having people from the actual world uh, step in and give us some, you know, little cues and stories about what they were going through. And and for us as actors, it's it's just trying to really get the essence as much as we can, because, you know, we're obviously not from that era. We're not from Texas. Um, and, you know, that part of it is is, is incredibly important to to honor the story as as, as best as we can. Mm -hmm. And for you, Jose? Yeah, I, I mean, I think for mostly it was learning golf because these guys lived and breathed golf every day. So my biggest concern was showing up and not knowing what I was doing. So, I, you know, I could read all the lines and, you know, um, um, represent the character. But part of that character involved being obsessed with golf. So that I mean, I, that's definitely some research I took that I took upon myself to make sure I got obsessed with it, with the game as much as they were. Yeah, when I saw the trailer, I was like, golf, Latinos, I've never seen that before. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs>
<laughs> we don't think of golf with as Latino with you know Latinos. Not at all. <laughs> so that must have been a challenge how to learn because in the movie they actually they actually also talk about form and the way to hold a club. And I tried golfing once. I was like, yep, yeah, no, never mind. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's a different story when you have like a film production paying golf pros to give you free lessons. You know, when you when you when you come at it from that angle, it's a whole different game. Because trust me, I I hated the game too. And you know, when you come at it from that angle, who wouldn't love golf? If they start paying you to play golf, watch how quickly you'll learn. Who who were some of the pros that were teaching teaching you? Uh, Sergio got yeah, oh. Sergio. Nice. Yeah. Fortunately for me, uh, I was. I, I played the game before I was booked for the movie already. So um, I loved I loved playing before and, and I still love playing to this day. So the transition wasn't as difficult. But um, but of course, you know, we did have a golf instructor on set. Um, Dennis Quaid, who's an avid golfer, was also on set. And I think it was just a matter of making sure our swings look as real and as, you know, authentic as possible. So what was uh, for Dennis Quaid, what was like the one tip he gave you for golfing? Or for golfing slash acting. <laughs> uh, I mean, there was, I mean, there was, there was many tips, um, but I think most important, um, I guess, as you know, small as it seems, was just like the follow through of the swing, just making sure my posture and and just the form looked, you know, you know, up, up, you know, up to date. But it was kind of cool to be a part of because it's like it was life imitating art in a sense that. Yeah, like I was, you know, okay at playing, but there was certain things that I could learn more of. And while I was on set, he was actually teaching me. And it just so happened that him teaching me just kind of translated on screen because he's doing that as well as a coach. So, um, yeah, it was it was it was really great to have Dennis involved. And um, I'm, I'm glad he was involved. because, Like I said, he's an avid golfer. And and um, it was there was a lot of tips that he gave me. Um, yeah, a lot. Did you guys become golfers after this? Not good ones, but yeah. No, <laughs> no. But well, no, yes, we're golfers, but not not good ones. Yeah, not good golfers. But we we uh, genuinely on and off camera, we played so much golf, um, and we fell in love with the sport. And and hopefully, this movie can can make a push for the sport and and have more people that look like us playing it because honestly, it's an amazing sport. And and playing it with your friends or playing it competitively, it's it's a it's a very hard game, but it's it's a special one for sure. Yeah, it looks easy on the screen, but like I said, I've tried hitting them, and I'm like, yeah, this is not no, easy. Thank you. It's not easy. Thank it you. is not easy trying to learn, you know, yeah. form and all that stuff. I don't know if you ever watched the I Love Lucy shows, but they, they have an episode. Yeah. Oh, never mind. But yeah, no, I love that Desi Arnaz. He, you know, he's actually a big inspiration. Um, I feel like a lot of Latinos should take him as an inspiration, uh, Latino actors, because you know he got to where he was at in the '50s. You know, mm -hmm. so he's he was like one of the leads in a network TV show in the fifties, you know, where discrimination was um, way higher than it was now. So the fact that he was able to accomplish that at his era is just a testament to how, you know, hard work speaks for itself, no matter he, where you are. You know? And he doesn't get enough camera because uh, credit because he created the multicam for TV series. Yeah, and I, I mean, didn't know kidding? that. So the movie came out, the movie with Javier Bardem. I was like, what? Right. I mean, it's, I mean, in a, in an industry like Hollywood, you know, you need to have a personality on top of everything, it seems. But but more than anything, I mean, the guy didn't sleep, you know, so it's like it just goes to show that he, even with all those restrictions, even with all the, all that discrimination, the guy was able to make it climb all the way up the ranks and do something uh, revolutionary, even in that time period, despite being Latino, you know. Yeah, well, I'm glad you know of him because sometimes nowadays people are like, who's Ricky Ricardo? I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what I loved about the story is usually when you have these kind of underdog stories, it's kind of like a white savior, right? So here you don't, I mean, you kind of have one, but it mostly it's Jay Hernandez who kind of <laughs> just learns who he is because he's telling you not to be Mexican, essentially, right? Yeah. Throughout mm -hmm. the film. And then he's he learns like, oh, I'm I'm the one that's not you know following bad advice. Do you like that that kind of dynamic? Yeah, I think that dynamic is really great. It, it's all about, you know, um, complexity and characters. You know, I think that's something that uh, Julio really tapped into and is a fantastic filmmaker. And, um, you know, it's kind of refreshing to have characters that are, aren't are good or bad. They just are who they are and they have their own um, things that they want to achieve in their life. And, you know, that's just that's a well-written character, somebody who's very complex.
his, his role in this movie is, is huge. And he has, you know, many heartfelt, you know, deep lines. I mean, obviously you said one of them uh, when it came to the mannerisms and the etiquette on the golf course, but another one that resonates with me um, was, um, you know, after I, we, we go to that diner and, and um, there's a little trouble that we run into. And, and I took the easy route in, in, in retaliating by hitting a golf course through the window. And we're all excited as if, you know, yeah, I did a heroic thing and we, I showed them, but he pulls me inside and said, okay, cool. That was fine for right now. But what do you think is going to happen to the next, you know, Mexican that walks into that diner just based off of their experience with you? You know, how are you pushing forward? How are you making an example? How are you making it better for other people that are like you, that have your skin tone, that have, you know, that come from where you come from? So I feel like that was another big um, scene that resonated with me. Uh, another big line that that really made me think and, and have a, a different, uh, you know, outlook and perspective and, and how sh I should address you know, certain slander or certain, you know, bad things that, you know, that happened to me. Yeah, that was a great, some great advice. And then it pays out, pays off at the end. That, that exactly. Was and I yeah. was like, oh, exactly. so good. Yeah. All right, guys, like I said, I really enjoyed the movie. Such a feel good movie, but also dealt with some ugly, you know, things in the past, but it's overall a feel good movie. And uh, you guys did a really great job. Really Thank great you. characters. Thank you. Thank right. you so much. Thanks so much. Have a great day.